Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. What I have here today is the 2024 Chevrolet Trax RS. Special thanks Chevrolet Philippines for allowing me to have a land out review of their brand new crossover. I already did my first initial impressions last year so check those all out on my channel. I have learned a lot more now with this car and to be honest, it could be one of my crossovers of the year. Yes, you may quote me on that one. For this truck, it looks much, much more drastic and more aggressive compared than that of the previous generation. You get LED lights all around. And being this RS top of the line model, you get your RS badges here. And very special to me, you get black bow tie badges rather than that of the conventional gold ones. Well, if you specifically want the trucks that has the gold bolt you can go for the Trax LT model that would be a separate review powering the Chevrolet Trax is a brand new 1.2 liter turbocharged three-cylinder engine that produces 137 horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque mated to a six-speed automatic transmission that powers only the front wheels and this is the biggest talking point with the Chevrolet Trax because as a crossover you expect bigger engines like a 1.5 liter four cylinder engines for example but we only get here a very small uh, three cylinder engine very interesting choice what Chevrolet has done with this uh, engine and I will be a bit more technical than usual compared to my previous reviews this engine runs on a wet timing belt system Chevy have gone with this route because it's lighter it doesn't hamper performance compared to a chain belt in return as well you get better fuel efficiency lower emissions and a much better NVH and if you see here in the back section of the engine you get a massive heat shield because your electronic turbocharger is located there down the side this is longer wider and shorter in height compared to the previous generation giving this more like station wagon proportions and I literally uh, park this in front of my house you can see the height difference compared with cars and it's as tall as some of sedans which I kind of like since of this uh, crossover world craziness recently usual cladding's here and there LED repeaters on each side of the mirrors and these are running on Goodyear Assurance tires running on 2, 2, 5, 55 and 18 series tires now here at the rear you get a unique set of rear LED tail lights and being again the tax top of the line model RS badge here on the right side black bow tie and your tax designation I forgot how the LT uh, look like i think it was even chrome if not mistaken or even absent in the first place now being the rs top of the line model including two with the red line you get an electronic tailgate now interesting uh fact with some of tax models like example in the us and canadian markets they don't even get electronic tailgate and anti-pinch features so you don't have uh, to do enough force to stop this or activate this in the first place rather so you get a total boot space here of 700 liters little enough for a race weekend and or hauling uh, stuff to transfer houses and once again special thanks to Chevrolet Philippines and Chevrolet Makati Miguan my uh, friends and who partnered me for my Saudi World Series Philippines kart race round two and put you back there underneath you get a space saver donut type tire and few more cubby spaces only here on the left side because the right side is just completely blank this doesn't go anywhere but if you put this here there it goes completely flat and of course it will double once you fold all of the seats down at 1400 and 5 liters which is pretty decent and as well gentle reminder if you want to carry like as shown in video four small boxes you have to remove this tonneau cover but hey at least they all fit Now here in the interior of this Chevrolet Trax, I really dig this interior. It looks a little bit more premium than usual. Here in the door card, there's a lot of plastics here and there, but it makes up for it. You get soft touches and red stitching all around. So very comfortable to put, place your elbow here. And you have your electronic tailgate button just down below with a height adjustment. Right, so refreshing that I have a Chevrolet Land. That's a bit uh, special for me. So anyways the tracks is dominated by two large screens one for your eight inch instrument cluster with a nice digital tachometer you have a soft limiter to of 4000 uh, rpm just uh, out of my curiosity fuel range odometer and all of your important information there's no changes officially uh like example if you put it to eco sport and normal mode remember this tracks doesn't even have a those modes but you can change it here in the infotainment system and place whatever you want and i just set personally the uh, fuel economy which i'll get to uh, later on here on the left side you get your 
light controls, and a very unique set of air conditioning vents. They mimic like that of uh, airplane turbines. And on the right side, you get an RS logo once again. But this gloss black team, yeah, so it's a bit moisty and that's the disadvantages of uh, gloss black materials in the first place. Same here too with the uh, center console. Here you have your 11-inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I even remembered last year that everyone was crazy. Uh, hello to Jom Dupit and Adrian1011 who assisted me here in this Landout review. Back to last year, there was no Apple uh, CarPlay icon. So that was a bit confusing to us uh, reviewers if their car was present with it or not in the first place. However, though, uh, by the time I've had this car for almost a week now, the Android Auto is a little bit laggy at times, so we almost got lost going to the tracks. No pun intended. Uh, kidding aside, yeah, it's a little bit of an issue here with some of the, what, even the phone connectivity like Bluetooth and all that. However, once you get it working, there is no issue whatsoever. Then more stuff here, like for your traction control. Well, this one, I left it on for obvious reasons because I'm on the public road. But once you turn everything off, you can have a lot of wheel spin, which is a big surprise for me. Then you can adjust more here, like for your climate control, but I just use the conventional buttons and knobs here, just down below. And then here for your vehicle settings, stuff like for your TPMS, your oil life, your engine air filter life, the gauges, you have your battery voltage, coolant temperature. Very handy if you take this to the truck. I'm not saying I di did bring this to the truck, just, <laughs> just kidding. And then the most important ones here for your tip information and for your fuel economy. Right, so you can see the numbers displayed already there. This Chevrolet tax sips fuel like crazy. That's something I've never experienced in a vehicle that I've borrowed in my entire YouTube career so far, okay, so far. And this is not even a hybrid vehicle. Take note of that. And yeah, that's pretty much it here with this infotainment system. Oh yeah, tune uh, volume bottom and your off bottom, well, mute button rather. And it's a pretty simple uh, layout for the the stuff here i like that it's not the usual oa that you have to control your air conditioning vents uh the aircon temperature the lights all buried here in the infotainment system it's a very simple touch i like what chevy have done here steering wheel i love the black bow tie and then here are all of your buttons for your cruise control and on the right side phone connectivity once again and weirdly your volume is not here it's right behind the steering wheel itself like this one turn you off again and more here on the left for your changing of these uh, radio stations itself. Uh, this I found really handy during our road trip last weekend. And for the cruise control system, this is not a fully adaptive one, but I kind of liked it as well because you have forward collision warning. Although it's a little bit nervous at times, however, once you get it going, at least it will stop very, very quickly. And what I like here, there's even a sports car reference or NASCAR reference. You have a speed limiter or as I would say a pit lane speed limiter. So I found this very handy during the NLEX road trip when it was a little bit congested and then I just set it to 60 or 80 kilometers per hour. Pretty flat bottom steering wheel. This one's a little bit shiny but at least it's not a uh, fingerprint magnet. Further down the air conditioning controls, you get your 12 volt socket, USB-C port, USB port and a wireless charging pad. Further behind, lane departure warning button and your auto hold button. Two cup holders and a placement for your key just here. And then gear shift, you have your RS logo and your usual PR and DL. However, though, it's, it's a little bit misaligned for my liking only because there are times when I want to move forward, I put it all the way to L, which is manual mode. More on the diving later on. Electronic parking brake and extra cubby space here and a center console box, which you can fit a tumbler itself, which is cool. However, though, the center console box doesn't uh, stay in place, but... At least it makes up for it. It's perforated leather. And speaking of itself, all the seats here are perforated leather. It is very good, very comfortable. Not much boasting. Hence, this is not intended to be a NASCAR or a Corvette uh, C8 GTD or GT3. Anyways, uh, you get electronic adjustments for my driver's seat only. This one's a fully manual one for the right passenger seat. And each of the headrests, you have your red RS logos with, along too with the start here on the back itself. Glove box, pretty decent. You have even a leather manual. And then above here, you have controls for the sunroof, light controls, and safety reminders here, like for your passenger airbags. Visor, vanity mirror only. There's no light. And sadly, yeah, the visors don't extend.
Now here of the rear of the Chevrolet trucks, it's basically simple. Here in the door cards, it's all plastic now and the usual cubby space along with cup holders, but they're just a bit smaller. One map pocket only behind the right front passenger seat. And at least in the middle, you get two air conditioning vents, a USB-C port and a USB port. And one of the few crossovers that I know that's not a hybrid, that doesn't have a CVT and just has a regular automatic transmission. There is no transmission tunnel whatsoever. So I understand now why Chevrolet made this car a little bit longer to enhance the creature comforts here in the rear seats itself. And the space here... Of is amazing too. The feet room is amazing. My knee room is almost infinite. Headroom though, despite the sloping roof design, well, again, like what I mentioned earlier, station wagon like proportions, I still have enough headroom. So at least around six footers would be still uh, be safe here to sit here in the rear. Then central armrest, you get two cup holders with uh, grips on them. The seats here are pretty much the same, a perfect leather along with the red stripes just here in the middle itself. And get lights here along too with your voice microphone. Now driving the Chevrolet trucks. Judging from the title itself, this is such an underrated crossover. Overall, it's very quiet, comfortable, and fuel efficient. The 1.2 liter turbo 3 cylinder power unit is definitely a highlight of this car. It's got enough pep to it. The 6 speed automatic is very balanced and smooth. It does get the job done once you need to floor it while overtaking. As such, this thing is surprisingly really peppy. Actually, the transmission is so good that I left it in D or automatic mode most of the time. And I just use L mode in the steepest of car uh, parking ramps only. Because if I just put it in manual mode, I mean, it's pretty good. Using the buttons here on the side of the gear shifter itself. But the ratios itself, yes, it may be long, but the fine tuning of the response, like here, uh, drive mode only, and then just running 40 kilometers per hour and floor it. Just a slight delay, but once you get going, you get really going. Wow. Right. And that's what I like too with this uh, six speed automatic transmission. As I mentioned too earlier, it's not a CVT transmission, there are proper gears. So you can have a little bit of play uh, once you uh, take this up to the twisties. Going back to the power unit itself, being a three-cylinder engine, every characteristics of all of these engines tend to have vibrations here. But not for this Chevrolet trucks. I mean, here it has such... Okay, just going over bumps. But here, just running it smoothly around 50 kilometers per hour. Look how suppressed the cabin is. It's... Very, very much quiet in here. Call me crazy. It even rivals that of what? Hybrid vehicles. The NVH for me is one of the best I've ever encountered so far in a crossover. I've even driven this for more than 100 kilometers to the tracks, no, no, no pun intended, uh, to City Cart Pampanga from Manila and then all the way back. I've never ever experienced any driving fatigue. There are very few cars or this is the first car that I encountered did not give me any problems with my previous cars that I've driven. Chevrolet have done a good job with creature comforts with this Chevrolet Tux. And another talking point with this Chevrolet Tux is its fuel economy. This is where the car really shines. So on heavy heavy as a city driving you can get as worse as 8.3 kilometers per liter worse and on better days you can manage 14.2 kilometers per liter and then on the highway you can hit 20 kilometers per liter easily but the best one i got was 21.3 kilometers per liter so with good nvh on the highway driving dynamics and fuel economy this chevrolet truck says a lot <laughs> And for a three-cylinder, it sounds pretty good, actually. And that's high speed in no time. Right, the Trax is not intended to be a Corvette or a Camaro itself. But having driven this a lot on the twisties, this is such a fun car. The steering feel may be light, however, it makes up for it, as you can see on camera, with the quick steering ratio. Very few uh, crossovers in this class. Usually it tends to be numb and a bit lazy. This one, no, it's 
actually quite responsive for such a big crossover, compact crossover rather. The biggest surprise for me is the brakes. As a racer myself, this is very easily to modulate and you can literally stop on the dime. And here, 40 and then they just suddenly brake. And the forward collision warning too, doing its thing, you can stop on a dime. Now here for the rear seat impressions, yeah, it's just as comfortable like any other crossover. However, the Chevrolet Trax runs on a front McPherson strut setup and then a torsion beam here at the rear. So it's making the Trax a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, a bit more firmer than usual. However, it's not as harsh as everyone might one expect. So that is my full review of this Chevrolet Trax RS top of the line model. Now, this is the other talking point of this vehicle is the price. Yes, it's a steep asking price of 1,948,888 pesos. However, Chevrolet PH are on a roll at the moment. There have been massive discounts almost everywhere, starting off around 230,000 pesos, making this around 1.7 million pesos. So that will just depend on the dealership itself. But if it's just only 230,000 pesos of discount, still consider it 1.7 is not as expensive as 1.9 billion pesos. But from my two cents on this uh, Chevrolet Trax RS crossover, you should definitely consider this. So again, I'd like to thank Chevrolet Philippines for lending me this Trax RS and to uh, as well for them partnering with me in this all the World Series karting race uh, last weekend and special thanks to to the boys in front Aiden 1011 and Jerem Dumpit check out their full diving impressions of this uh, vehicle hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more Chevrolet reviews coming right up bye bye